Hello and welcome to another episode of Food Tech 101. Now today, we're going to make a classic English main course centerpiece. We're going to make a beef wellington, but not an actual beef wellington. We're going to make a vegan beef wellington. Let's get to it. All right, let's get to it. Uh, the first part of this is quite easy. We're going to blend. To, we're going to make our wet ingredients, and then we're going to combine our wet ingredients with our dry ingredients. If you've seen the video where we make uh, vegan chicken roast, it's a very similar process. Uh, the only difference is we're flavouring our uh, gluten protein with more of a, uh, a beef flavour, and I'm also using beetroot to give uh, our uh, vegan meat uh, a red a red colour, which is more akin to beef. So in we go with our chickpeas. Into that, I'm going to put just about three, about 150 grams of beetroot. Next, our seasoning. A little bit of soy sauce. Next, we've got our vegetable stock. Here we're using a uh, beef flavoured uh, powder, still vegetarian. I'm going to generous heat tablespoonful of this. I'll taste it afterwards and see if it needs a bit more. About a spoonful of onion granules. About a spoonful of garlic. And then here we have some smoked paprika. I'm going to go for a spoonful of smoked paprika. Now, all we do is we blend. Now, my blender isn't the best, so it's not blending this very well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of the chickpea water just to kind of help it get going. Okay, it's fully blended now. I added a little bit more water because the beetroot seemed to soak up a lot of water. But let me just have a little taste. Mmm, really nice, full of flavour. The first stage, so far so good. Next stage now is to put our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients. Our dry ingredients are simply two cupfuls of vital wheat gluten. So I'm going to get the food processor now. Dry ingredients is simply two cups of the vital wheat gluten. So in goes our vital wheat gluten. Next, our wet ingredients. Okay, so we've got our wet ingredients in with our dry. So we have our our beetroot and our stock and our seasonings in. And we've also got our gluten. Next, we're going to use a food processor just to blend it all together to make the dough. Okay, so it's been on a food processor for about five minutes. That's enough time to help fully develop the gluten. Let's take it out and see what we're looking at. So, here's our gluten. Now what's interesting is already, it starts to look an awful lot like, like meat. It's got the consistency. It's got the colour because of the beetroot. Obviously, we know it's not. So I'm just going to work this a little bit. It's going to bring all the parts together. But already, look, it's got the consist consistency of meat. You can see it. You can see it looks like meat. In fact, if it didn't, if it didn't tell you and you just tuned in, you'd think 
this was a piece of meat. It's got a, a bit of tug to it, got some resistance. Amazing. I'm just going to work this a little bit. Kind of bring it all together. Ultimately, what I want to do, I want to shape it with a bit of a, a log shape. Now, I'm making a meal for some of my family who are coming over today. And this, this log, this Wellington, needs to feed just six people, which is, which is more than capable of doing once it's cooked. I mean, you'll, six people will get a really good, good, block, good piece out of this. So I've got no worries that it'll feed that many. To make a good Wellington, we need a good shape. So I want a nice cylindrical shape. Wrap this up. Wrap it nice and tight. And the funny thing is I learnt how to make a beef wellington, or my vegan version, from looking at one of um, Gordon Ramsay's videos. I'm using the same technique he used to make his, his meat version, but the only difference is I'm using the vegan beef which you just see me create. So I'm gonna wrap it nice and tight like I suggested in the video. In the ends. And as you were saying, as Gordon was saying on the video, the tighter the ends, the neater or the better the shape. Alright, so there we have it. <laughs> it's amazing just how much this actually looks and it feels already. It has a consistency of meat. It's incredible. So all I'm gonna do. I'm going to put this in the oven, put the oven, I'm going to put this in the fridge to rest for about 10 minutes. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create um, our particular Wellington is going to have like sort of, sort of a, a coat around the outside. And that's where we work with our mushrooms. So the next step is to work with the coating. So I'm going to put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes and come back. Okay, while our beef, our beef is in the, the fridge, just cooling off and sort of solidifying, I'm going to quickly blitz up. I've got two onions here, quickly bits up two onions and a few mushrooms. And this is going to form like a bit of a coating around our beef before we put our pastry on. It all, it all makes sense. So I'm going to quickly blitz off these and I'm going to saute them in a pan. Just a little bit of, just a little bit of soy sauce to give it a little bit of flavouring. And to give it a little bit of a, a nutty taste, I'm going to add some salted peanuts. Bits of all the ingredients, a little bit of oil, a little bit of pan frying. It smells nice already. Okay, our mushrooms and onions all cooked down. Try to cook out most of the water. We don't want a wet mixture. To help with that, I'm going to add some breadcrumbs. This is probably about two slices of bread, and that should be enough, I think just to soak up any excess liquid. All right, I think we're almost ready to assemble. Now our beef has been sat in the fridge to cool down a little bit, about 10 minutes. To be honest with you, could do it a bit longer, but I'm running out of time because people are coming for dinner soon. So what I wanna do, um, before I give it its final uh, sit back in, in the fridge, is to just sear all around the outside, try and trap all the flavors on the inside. And it also helps cut some of the cooking time down. So I'm gonna I put a little oil and a little uh, margarine. I've got some Vitalite here, some vegan butter. Some little bit of Vitalite in there. I'm gonna basically roast off all around the outside and then I'm gonna put it back in the fridge. So here's our vegan beef. And to be honest with you, this really does look like a bit of steak. Really does look like a bit of beef. Look at that. Lovely colour. Just gonna put this in. Let's 
It's gonna get a little bit of a browning all the way around. So here, we've got a nice browning all the way around. That's gonna brown it top and tail, wrap it back up, wrap it back up, put it back in the fridge. So here's our vegan roast. It's been seared all on the outside. You can see it's still not cooked on the inside, so it's nice and tender on the inside. I've just given it a nice browning all around the outside. Next, I'm gonna wrap it back up and stick it back in the fridge. Okay, so I'm gonna put a layer of our mushroom mixture. Gonna unwrap our beef. It's important to leave a bit of an edge so our joint can seal back onto itself. It's been resting, it's been cooling a little bit, not fully cool. I think if I had more time, I'd put more time between the cooling stages. But here's beef. Our beef's going to go here and then I'm going to have a go at rolling it up. Alright, so using the cling film to help you, and it's a little bit tricky, I'm just going to roll it back over right onto itself. And it just about makes it right the way over. Some more cling film. Okay. I'm going to wrap this back up, stick it in the fridge for a little bit to kind of solidify, and then I'm going to glaze it with some butter and some soy milk, then I'll put it in the oven. Okay, so we're nearly there now. I'm just gonna glaze the outside of the pastry with some melted vegan butter. And then the final part is just to kind of put a little bit of a design on our pastry. So I'll use the back of a knife. Put the design. So I'm going to put it in the oven now for about 40 minutes, that should be enough to golden brown all our pastry and crisp, crisp it up just about nice and also cook all the way through. A few little touches. Okay, and we're out of the oven. Our, it feels nice and firm. Let's, now the, the beef wellington, it's all about what it's like when it's sliced, so let's give it a cut, see what it cuts like. Oh wow. There we go. We have our beef in the middle. Wow. <laughs> so here we go. And here is our beef Wellington. Pastry around the outside, we've got our little mushroom filling, things that go on the outside a bit better added flavor, and our beef in the middle. I think we're gonna to have to call that a success. If I'm gonna be critical on the outside, I could have made a slightly prettier job of the pastry. But that said, I think if we look in, look in the inside, that is a really, really nice job. And there we have it, uh, Vegan Beef Wellington. Once again, thanks for joining us at Food Tech 101. Food Tech 101 is now also available on Facebook and on Instagram, and you can get us via email at admin at foodtech101.co.uk. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Once again, my name is Mr. Liber, but you can call me Sir. Things we know.